Well, are you struggling with your singleness? Speaker and author Krista Smith shares about her journey, the ups and downs, and what inspired her to write her book, Singled Out in a Couple's World. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, is there purpose in your singleness? Do you feel like married people assume something is wrong with you because you've not found your spouse? Are you struggling with the thought you'll never see your desire to be married or ever be fulfilled? Well, today's guest knows these questions all too well, and she's here to tell us more about that. But first, join me around the table is April Simons. How are you? I'm doing good, and I'm so glad you're tackling this. It's such yeah. a great subject that we don't think about. So Yeah, because, you know, you think about how many people are divorced yeah. and, and how right. many people are single. Yeah. It's like half the church. And a lot of times they get stuck in with the couples and they don't really fit in. And exactly. we need to pay attention to that. Definitely. Anna Kendall. Yes. You've been married how many years now? F almost 58. Wow. Yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, we've been married longer than I am old. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Yes. But here's what I think is so good about this show. So many people seem to think that singleness is the waiting room for marriage. And it's not. Singleness is its own precious thing from God. Yeah. It's not just a place where you wait and hope. It's a place where God wants to use you. That's good. And to Haviland Ford, welcome. Um, singleness, you can be whole and single. Absolutely. You know, I didn't get married till I was 33, so I'm really excited about yes, this talk today yes. for us that have waited a little bit longer in life yeah. to get married. This for is your exciting. dream come true. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. You had a little stint with singleness. Mm -hmm. I did, and, and you know, it was a... It's a different world from, from being married. Totally you know. different, totally. Yeah. And I, it was a time I actually just poured myself into God, mm -hmm. ministry, and I think finding a lot about myself. Yeah. Because I married so young. Yeah. Early on, I, I grew up, tried to grow up and mature into a woman yeah. when I was married, so yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's going to be good to talk about today. Well, she is an international speaker and minister. She's here to talk about her book, Singled Out in the Couple's World. Please welcome Krista Smith. Krista, hi. hi, how are you? We're good. good. How are you? Great. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, welcome to, to the table. Honored to be at the table. <laughs> We're all excited to have Krista here today. Well, we know from the Bible that not everyone's life's path is the same. So what do you do when the very dream God has placed in your heart always seems out of reach? Well, no one knows more about that than Krista, and she's here to reveal what the Lord showed her on her journey. You've written the book, Singled Out in a Couple's World, and um, I know that especially when Marcus passed over a year ago, that um, that was such a weird mm. Yes. dynamic it to is. go from being a couple yes. to being yes. by myself. Mm -hmm. So I got a, a little taste kind of of what it was like, you know, to be single. And um, there are a lot of singles out there. Hey, singles, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> this program's for you today. So, um, but I mean, it's not, it's not easy sometimes for someone who's looking maybe to be married or have a family. There are others that are perfectly content mm -hmm. being single and God's right. called them to be single. Um, Let's talk a little bit about your journey. Like early on, did you think you'd get married? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up, I was so blessed. I grew up in a home where my parents were really happily married. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with a lot of laughter. I was modeled, which was such a gift, uh, a, a godly, happy marriage. And okay. so that became- Which is like rare today. So rare. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was the goal, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, my parents right. modeled to me what I wanted. The problem is I looked around. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 and no. Like, you yeah, know, so yeah, I just yeah. didn't see who that'd be possible with per se. So it put a, in a good way, a standard within me that I was like, I want that. Mm -hmm. You know, I want what my parents have. Mm -hmm. So I went through high school, not a, never a serious relationship, went through college, not a serious relationship. You start going through my 20s, even my 30s, and I'm like, okay, anytime, God. Like, I'm ready, <laughs> anytime here. Um, but they had set a standard within me, but it, it really was that place of waiting on God to write that story and finding a place of fulfillment regardless of my relationship status. 
Um, and when you're walking out your story, and I think we can all relate whatever your story is, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel that significant. It's just you and God every day. Just, mm -hmm. right. you're just his kid. You're just his daughter. You're just choosing your father, right? Over and over. You're just like, okay, God, like I trust you with my story. I trust you with my timeline. Um, but I certainly desired marriage. I definitely didn't think I was uh, going to be single all of those years. Yeah. Uh, that was not what and I thought. And you could have gotten married. I mean, there were there were guys that yes. ask you out. That, Absolutely. But you just knew that they didn't have the package that you were looking for, and that was okay. Yes. Well, it's kind of hilarious. I pastored for 13 years in support pastoral wars, executive pastor, associate pastor, whatnot. And I had, right before Sean was brought into my life, I knew something had shifted because I had six men in two weeks make appointments, oh, right. come to my office and tell me God had told them I was their wife. Oh, no. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I always advise singles, keep it to yourself yeah. until on your wedding day or after. By the way, God told me, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. So there's no manipulation here. But so I, I definitely had people pursue. And then even at times I had interest yeah. and then God was like, nope. You know, so I had yeah. to really put my heart in check. Yeah. Uh, so it went both ways. Um, but I think God really showed me early on marriage wasn't the goal. Because we can get married. So you, yes. you can get married. We, yes. we have TV shows about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can get married and make it happen if you want. But if you want you God's You can get best, married at first sight. Yeah. You bet. 90-day yeah. fiance, here we come. I'm like, <laughs> yes. 100%. Yeah. When did you come to that place in your life when you said, God, you tell me yes or no. If this one is a no, when did, when did that happen where you were just really submitting to that? Absolutely. That happened post-19. So at 19 years old, I'd, I'd had a crush on a guy my whole freshman year of college, thinking he was the one, only to learn when I came back from my second year of university that he had dated a friend of mine all summer. So he came back, and she lived across the hall from me. Oh, wow. So I had the privilege of watching him pursue her. Oh, and date her. Yeah, you get it. Thank were you, you in the wedding? <laughs> no, that thank was God. God. Thank God, I'm, I'm honest, right? But you, were, but you were in 13 weddings. 13 you weddings. You talk in the book. You were in 13 yes. weddings. True story. I actually had to How many go dresses? through and count. I mean, those right? dresses. Yes. Right? So when I watched the movie 27 Dresses, I was like, that's rude. <laughs> I was like, that's my life, right? <laughs> really? But, you know, I at 19 years old, I really I made that vow because I saw I was a bit heartbroken because yeah. he had chosen someone else but and he was a great guy but I he wasn't for me mm -hmm. and I found myself saying that prayer Jesus you know I give you my heart guard it shield it give it back to me when you want me to give it away I meant it so sincerely mm -hmm. that when I prayed anytime a guy would pursue me or ask me out I went to the father and I just say Jesus do I have permission because I recognized I just do, and probably each of you know this, you can't marry just anyone. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is God's best. I, I just right. believe that. Yeah. And I'm not necessarily buying into the school of thought of the one, yeah. but mm -hmm. I do believe there's the highest, yeah. Yeah. if that no, makes I, sense. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. right? De Havilland, you were, um, you're very good friends with Krista. Yes, and, and I... What you I, can relate to what she's talking about because absolutely. you got married at... We got married, I got married at 33 years old. And okay. so I understand what it is to wait and learning that you're not actually waiting on God, you're waiting in God. And you God. probably had opportunities before that you could have. I had opportunities, but I think what you the wrong said, one. No. it's not, it's more <laughs> to marry plenty of the wrong one, that it's more about purpose than yeah. it's, you yeah. can't just marry anyone. And that's what I loved about your journey, watching you in the place of waiting, pursuing the Lord as your husband and not being, just picking anyone. Cause I yeah. think that would have been a setback for you. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that about it. Now, quickly tell Tell us yours and Will's story. Like, yeah, so it was kind of a God thing. Thing. It was completely a God thing. You know, I was invited to a prophetic conference by our spiritual mothers, and the only seat available was right next to <laughs> Will Ford. Oh, and I think nice. I'll sit next to the brown-eyed guy with the dimples. <laughs> that so, handsome yeah. man. But I, I know what it's like. How did, how did you tackle just, you know, in the waiting, uh, not, not focusing on it? Because I see run into a lot of younger women and older women, and it's like they're consumed with it. How did and they you feel see? like they're not whole. Yeah. Right. They feel yeah. like they're just half a person. Yeah. Yeah. But they are whole. When you Absolutely. in Christ, you are whole. Yeah. I mean, he is your husband. Absolutely. He is your Absolutely. father. He, you know, he's everything that you need him to be. Totally. I think for me, I found what I was passionate about. Yes. When you're living out your passion, I agree with that. You feel whole. You yeah. feel feel uh, fulfilled. I 
I am, was created to preach the gospel. So I got, I just started preaching and I preached to whoever would listen, whether it was youth <laughs> groups, women's conferences. Then I, some pastors started letting me preach on Sunday morning at service. And I love to teach the word of God. I love to disciple. I, I was, I literally, the first time I did it, I remember crying <laughs> as I preached and I could get emotional thinking about it. I remember crying because I discovered in the moment, oh, mm -hmm. this is what I was created to do. I was created yes. to be a preacher. Yeah. You, so were created, I, you were feeling fulfilled. Absolutely. So I think because I was fulfilled mm -hmm. already, That's I right. wasn't waiting for marriage to fulfill me. I yes. think it becomes the all-consuming thing mm -hmm. when you don't feel consumed by God. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so true. true. What do you do, or let me ask you this, two things. I love what you said, I trust. I had to trust God's time timing. Were your parents and your family supportive of that, or were they trying to, nothing against the parents, but trying to set yes. you up with people? And secondly, what would you say to maybe parents of adult kids who have not found their somebody or not found their passion? How do we maneuver without trying to manipulate and trying to set them up, blah, 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 that Or make them feel less than yeah. because they're not. Totally, those are great questions. I grew up in a home, the youngest of three girls, and so my older sisters had gotten married and one got married at 22 and then one got married at 31. So different stories and then here I am the youngest. So in a good way, I think that had already been fulfilled in my parents, <laughs> you know, being oh, yeah. the third. But my parents are they also- They can start the grandchildren right, They can do all yeah. that. Like they already got the ball rolling yeah. for mom and dad. But I think also tr truth be told though, my parents are not pushy people. Mm -hmm. um, they're very much, they're godly people mm -hmm. that wait on God. Mm -hmm. So they're people of prayer. And yeah. so there was never a pressure. If anything, the pressure was wait for God's best, don't yeah. settle. That was 100% that yeah. the narrative for my parents yeah. was like, don't settle, don't yeah. settle. And I remember even like I had a crush on a guy and he definitely was not the right guy. It was that kind of missionary dating, yeah. which I never recommend. Right. right. And, and explain what missionary dating is because we've all done it. They do not know who they are in Jesus. <laughs> and we and you are going to help them learn that. Yeah. 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 We yeah. need we're to come to bring them to Jesus yeah. Yeah. because yes. they're supposed to be with us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let them know Jesus before you. So, <laughs> yes. you know, I think my parents, they just really pushed that narrative and had even done that kind of sit down with me at that time going, no, this is not God's highest for you. Like, you have to wait for God's best. They really reinforced that. Um, but I think as I got older, I did have to shake off people's mm -hmm. timeline of pressure, specifically mm -hmm. in the church. Being a single yeah. pastor, oh, yes. oh, oh. the yeah. amount of setups that were mm -hmm. coming my way, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and it was all with good intention. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think right. people love love. Yeah. Yeah. And they love people, to match make. They love to match <laughs> make. Particularly if you're happy, you want you Absolutely. pursue other people and want them to be happy. Right. Absolutely. And then they want to know why it didn't work out the person yeah. they say you have <laughs> Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Of course, being in, in ministry like that, you want to use wisdom as well. Absolutely. I, I love the fact that you talk about, uh, there's the, you know, people talk about virginity, but you really talk about purity. Mm -hmm. And um, there are people watching right now and you say, well, I've been in the wrong relationship, now I'm divorced. So mm -hmm. God can't do it. No, 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 no. It's mm -hmm. God is still wanting to work in your life in a supernatural way. Absolutely. And um, it's important that you listen to conversation like this because he doesn't want you to make the, the wrong mistake again. Right. So hopefully and divorce you, you doesn't can, destroy your destiny. It doesn't. Amen. That's good. Divorce Amen. doesn't destroy your destiny. Yes. And there's some of you that you've never been married and some of you that are even older and you're like, oh, I, I just gave up. Don't. I mean, if you still have that desire, Amen. then God may have something around the corner. Is that true? I mean, I I've agree. heard of people getting married on up into their 50s oh, and 60s. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, and beyond. Yes. I mean, you know what's so neat? I had a woman in her late 60s reach out to me via testimony on Instagram, you know, good old social media. <laughs> yeah. And she had read my book and she goes, I was still believing for her husband. I've never been married. Wow. And she said, I read my book. And part of my book is really creating an on-ramp. It's not a dating book. I'm actually, if you read my book, it's all about surrendering Jesus. But there is an element where I talk about when you do feel like God has you ready, there is a shift you have to make internally. And the Lord had mm -hmm. me make that shift where I was just so focused on the things of God. And I never lost that focus per se, but I did have to kind of pull my head up a little bit and go, oh, wait, there's men around. Yeah. <laughs> because I was so focused on Jesus that yeah. God was like, you yeah. need to create an on-ramp yeah. for people to pursue you. Mm -hmm. You have to have space in your life where someone goes, oh, I can fit in her life. Yeah. If you're so full That's and good. you're so busy, a man's going to look at your life and go, I don't know where I fit into that. How right. can I even pursue her? Where's the on-ramp? Yeah, yes. so there's this, there's this space you have to create mm -hmm. that the Lord took me through. So 
I think that's kind of a, a, something for all of us to learn when you're older, you know, creating that space, and that's what she did. Yeah. She goes, I created space. She goes, I met yeah. my person. We're Aww. now getting married. They're in the late 60s. Aww. I think that's he's, awesome. you know, I he'd been married before, but she'd never yeah. been. And I just think God, God's... God's never done right in our stories, mm -hmm. stories no matter what. I just he's think never done never writing done. our stories. He's, he's not done That's writing true. your story. That's right. That's and ask this question with you talk about creating space. I see a lot of people have this perfectionism where it's like they don't create space because they have this list yes. that no one can fulfill. Yeah. I've heard how about you, the list. How do, you, oh, how, list. how do you balance that list out <laughs> and, and deal with that as, as a woman? Well, you know, I dress like this. Working with young adults for years, pastoring in Los Angeles, I was working with, you know, majority of single people and my office hours as a pastor was being filled up with mainly people wanting to talk about relationships and how to do a Christian relationship. They'd never done a Christian relationship and, you know, kind of the list is a popular approach and I'm not anti-list, although in my book I say tear it up. <laughs> Here, here's really what I mean. And I probably... Because those gonna, people don't exist. Yeah, because yes. I, I probably I maybe didn't have to use that terminology, but I wanted people to understand, yes, there's non-negotiables. There are right. spiritual non-negotiables. Right. Yes. There is core values that you, you want to be have. equally yoked 100 yes. but you're not going to find a perfect person no, no. Yeah. I, I if i expected um, myself to meet the criteria on someone's list i would really disappoint them yeah. i'm not going to be able to meet everything on oh, someone's so list good. i knew i need, wanted because i have a very kind father i knew mm -hmm. kindness in, in my husband was essential for my home my marriage because if you have a kind man you're married to it's really easy to have a great marriage yes. Yes. right yes. Yes. so my husband husband is incredibly kind, that would be quote, quote, on my list. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I and then he loved Jesus. I mean, that's, absolutely, that's so equally your That's it. Yeah. Passionate for God, um, generous, integrity, character, walks in purity and holiness. Those are non-negotiables. And, and the outside is important. Yeah. I mean, oh, you've know, you got to yeah. have some chemistry. Yeah, yeah. you've got to oh, have some. Yeah. But it's not the most important. It is I mean, not, because that will fade. The heart is the yes. most important, right? And what about I, the heart? Talk about that. Oh, I mean, I feel like for women, a heart that we can trust, yes. right? Mm -hmm. A heart that is found trustworthy before mm -hmm. the Lord, that walks in integrity is the most precious priceless of hearts. Yeah. I think in a world where there's so much double-mindedness, yeah. to find a heart, to find a man, to be in a marriage, to be in a relationship with someone who is walking in holiness and righteousness mm -hmm. before the Lord, that really is living out the character of God in their yeah. life, mm -hmm priceless. Like mm -hmm. I can't, I can't put a price on that because that for me equals a husband that I can trust. I yes, can trust him with my finances. Good. I can trust him yes. with our dreams, our desire, yes. our ministry. Our ministries are merged together. I got to be able to trust him. He has to be able to trust me, yeah. yes. you know, yeah. with God's anointing on our lives, with the, with the ministries put on it. That's yeah. for all of us. We're yes. sharing that yeah. with another person. So let's talk about what is the difference between contentment and contending. Yes. Ooh, I learned this one. Mm -hmm. This one. Oh. This was a doozy with Jesus. This was. This was a. This was a year and you a half. You went around the mountain a couple times Ooh. on this one. I can tell. I was like blazing a trail, bringing people with me. You know, yeah. like it was well. like been here a few times. Yeah. Let me show you the ropes. Okay. You know, so. You know, to for me, the Lord asked me to lay down singleness. He on my thirty fifth birthday, he said, "Am I enough?" And I knew what he meant. Mm. You know when God asks you one question, but there's a whole <laughs> lot more he's asking you. Mm. Am I enough? Am I enough? And am I enough if you never get married? Mm. Do I satisfy? Am I still good? Will you still worship? Yeah. Will you still preach the same gospel? Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, you, if you never get that answer to that prayer, if you never get that desire, and I wrestled with it. And, and my, question, my answer to that was this, and it took a couple of days to give him the answer. And the answer was... I want you to be enough, but right now you're not. You're not enough, but I need you to become enough because if you're not enough, marriage won't satisfy. Nothing will satisfy That's if right. you're not enough. So you were honest. Super honest because yeah. God already knows our hearts. Let's be yes. honest. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know, he already knows. Right. So the Lord took me through a year and a half process and I grieved it. I grieved it like anything you have to fully lay down. I grieved my dad may never walk me down the aisle. I may not have that family mm -hmm. in the traditional sense that I was desiring. I may not have all those um, those firsts that you have like with a husband, you know, mm -hmm. I just, I knew there was a lot that I would in a sense have to give up in order to say yes to this aspect, this question the Lord was asking me. But I knew if the Lord was asking this of me, it really in the ultimate sense was worth it. Mm -hmm. That I, I was too far in in my walk with God, right? Yeah. I was, it's just like, 
I'm, I'm all in. I, I, you're enough, God. Okay. So it took a year and a half. I grieved it like you would anything else. At the end of that year and a half, the Lord then says, now that you learn to be content, because I got to the end of that year and a half of grieving, you, ladies, I literally didn't think I was going to get married. Yeah. I yeah. had so laid it down. I was so fulfilled. I was so content. I was like, we're good. God, it's you and me for the rest of my life. I have wonderful family, wonderful community, yeah. great friends. I'm very fulfilled. I feel very known. I feel celebrated in my community. And finally, God was able to say, okay, she's ready. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, really. And he goes, now I'm going to teach you to be content mm. and wow. content. Yeah. And this is what I call in my book kind of that beautiful tension, yeah. you know, of not losing the contentment, but believing for the mm -hmm. promise. I so think good. a lot of times mm -hmm. we think if I'm going to be content, it means I give up on the promise. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is what the Lord told me. He's like, you're not giving up on it. To be content isn't saying... I'm not believing for it. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can do it. It's being content, which that's what I thought it was initially. Yeah. God taught me to contend is, I'm really, if it never changes, yeah. you're still good. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm all in no matter what. I'm, I'm going to preach. That's, that's real right? trust. It's yeah. huge. And that's real faith. <laughs> I mean, that is real <laughs> trust and faith. It okay, is. so then we're all like hanging on the edge of our seat yeah. <laughs> because when you finally got content, praise God. Praise the Lord. And those of you watching, you're, you're going to get to that place you of are. contentment as well. Just surrender. Who, who came along? Oh my goodness. The most amazing <laughs> man, Mr. Sean Smith. <laughs> and you were yeah. like, you, you yeah. had no expectation because you oh. were just trusting God. I mean, and I didn't were, think I was going to get married. No, you were, you were content where you were. 100%. Yeah. So what happened when 100%. Sean showed up? When Sean he's in the audience, by the way. It's really cute. Oh, okay, he's so ahead. cute. I tell you what, when, she, when God brought Sean into my life, I almost, when Sean asked me out the first, you know, on our first date, I, like every other time, asked the Lord, you know, do I have permission to go on the date? And the Lord said, yes. F people have to understand, that was the first time I heard yes since I was wow. 19 years old. Wow. wow. So you knew that was serious. Oh, it was, he was but, huge. I mean, you could have gotten in the car and said, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and let me, let me, exactly, let me qualify. There, I, I had, I think, once in my 20s and once in my 30s, just so I'm being fully, you know, accurate. I had gone on a couple first dates, but on those first dates, Lord's like, no. So uh, there was, yeah. you know, there See, was what that. is amazing to me is you, you ask God that the first time at 19, yeah. and now you're 38, mm -hmm. and you're still asking. Every See, time. that is powerful. Yeah, that's good. That, that really is so is. good. And so when he said yes, and you went on the date, oh. did he say yes again? I literally on the date, I felt myself falling in love. I didn't know how that felt. I'd never been in love, oh. but I was like, oh, this is what people are talking about. I just fell in love. Like, <laughs> I'm looking at this man. We're, we're having Mediterranean food, which is my favorite. We're having Mediterranean food in Berkeley, California. And I'm looking at this man. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'd marry him right now if you asked me. And I, I, I just, I was in it. Like, yeah. I just loved him. Like, yeah. I just was like, I'm all in, you know, and my parents asked me after, of course, I call them after the date because they want to know all the details and I'm very close to my parents and they're like, so, and I'm like, he's the one. And so not there, at, you and know, your far, mother fainted yeah. and dropped the phone. <laughs> She's like, what? Yeah. Because they had never heard that verbiage yeah. from me. Yeah. Yes. They had yeah. never, all they had watched was me just say, Jesus, just consecrate it, consecrate it, surrender yeah. it. And so when I went to them initially and said, I felt like God said, yes, they said, we trust you and we trust your ability to hear God, which was really empowering. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents were just like, cause I was, I almost didn't trust it. Cause I was yeah. like, I want to go on this date. Is this really God? And then I'm on the first date and I'm like, he's the one. And I'm like, <laughs> but is this really? And so my parents agreed with me. They were like, we feel really good about this. We feel God on it. Cause I always feel like, you know, in those things, bring, bring, bring your accountability into it. Right, you know, sure. like those are right. life decisions, you yeah, know, the, yes. bring the people you trust. Then my, then Sean being an amazing man that he has flew up to meet my parents. We had just, I mean, one date, two dates. Oh, wow. He <laughs> flew up to Oregon to state his intention to my mom and dad, wow. took my dad to breakfast. And at the end of the breakfast, I'm at the house and I'm like at my parents' house waiting for them to come back. And I take my dad aside, of course, as soon as they walk through the door. And I'm like, what do you think? And my dad goes, he's the one. Aww, as soon amazing. as my dad said that, it was yeah. like, I think because I'm a bit of a daddy's girl. <laughs> and I just, I respect and value my dad so much that as soon as I just had my dad's blessing, mm -hmm. I just like the floodgates in my heart yeah. were like, I'm in. 
you know, because I just knew like, it was the father's blessing. Wow. How soon did y'all get married after? Year and a half. So year and we a half. still waited. Yeah. We dated a year. Now, and that one couldn't have been easy. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I would have I married him on our first date, you know? Um, I do think it was wise, though. It proved that we took it slower. Yes. I think that was a real wisdom for us. Yeah. Um, and it really allowed us to acclimate. I had pastor for 13 years. He had been on the itinerant minister world, world for years. <laughs> And I had felt released from the Lord to shift from pastoring to full-time itinerant with my husband yeah. mm -hmm. and really merge our ministries together that way. What would you say to people that are watching when you talk about the D word? Desperation. Yeah, I think people- The D word, desperation. <laughs> yes. Desperation. Desperate. I feel like we should whisper it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, desperation. Yeah. I, you know, I think it's gotten a bad rap and I don't think it's necessarily accurate or fair. I think desperation can actually be one of your greatest assets when it pushes you into God. Mm -hmm. I think That's when good. desperation really becomes destructive, yeah. all consuming, and of course it can mm -hmm. be a very negative thing. It, it's, it all depends on the narrative it takes on in your headspace, mm -hmm. uh, the emotional space it takes up in your heart space and the behavior that comes out of you in that place. But I think desperation, which it's proven in the word of God, can actually shift things in the spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Desperation can actually catch God's attention and mm -hmm. can actually move things mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. It can actually create a breakthrough because you press yeah. into God in the desperation. Yeah. So I think a lot of people feel embarrassed that they're desperate. And mm -hmm. I try to shift that and go, take your desperation, and actually have it push you into God mm -hmm. yes, and make it good. that Thing that actually is this beautiful uh, vehicle that God uses yeah. to actually unlock a depth in him. That so you don't need to be embarrassed, you're desperate. It's a desire, it's a longing, that's good. God created marriage. I kind of want to break off shame off of that's people's good. desperation. And I want people to recognize it's okay to really, really want something, mm -hmm. but what do you do with that? Yeah, does it take good. you away from the Lord or does it press you into him? So you talk about the pause button. I want you to briefly say yeah. that um, I understand about that because yeah. when my husband passed away over a year ago, you feel like you're like on pause and you you are through the grieving yeah. process. Mm -hmm. But at some point you have to, you know, take the pause button yeah. away right. mm -hmm. and you have to continue yeah. to live your yeah. life. Absolutely. I know for me that was really important to go through that grieving process, but then knowing that I'm gonna be here with destiny that God has for me, that I have to now live my life. And with Absolutely. that mm -hmm. will yeah. come opportunities and people don't need to be afraid of that. I love that. That it, Your example is so key. Cause to me, that's exactly the way we should live. Yes, we grieve things. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's hardships. Yes, there's trials and tribulations, but there has to come a point where we begin to live again yes. and give ourselves permission yes. to live yes. again and thrive again and love again. Again, yes. and enjoy yes. again right. and live out what God's put in us. And it might have shifted because mm -hmm. of what's happened in grief and trial and hardship, but actually what can come out of it is yeah. the most beautiful mm -hmm. version yes. of yeah. what Jesus has intended. So, so yes. it's so important we don't live in the pause. That, that's a word for somebody like you have just been stuck, <laughs> stuck, yeah. stuck in the pause button. Well, now the Lord is saying, I want you to press play. Yes. I want you to live again. So I've got it's purpose so for you. I've got destiny for you. And it doesn't take anything away from your past. Not or what all. God right. did, or the great things he accomplished mm -hmm. in your life. You can just stay there, mm -hmm. or you can be present and go into the future with what God has for you. Well, we are out of time. I want you to remember that God's plan for you is to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Isn't that right, Havlin? Absolutely. So if you're struggling <laughs> with being single, he's going to open doors that only he can open in your life, and he will do that for you. The Bible says he's no respecter of persons. He loves you so much, has a great plan, a continued plan for your life, okay? So if you're watching today and you're, and you're fighting to not lose hope, we want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. Again, that's why that toll-free number's on the screen. Our prayer partners are standing by ready to pray for you, encourage you, encourage you, or of course you can send your request by clicking on prayer. I want to thank Krista for joining us and sharing her story. Be sure to pick up a copy of her book, Singled Out in a Couple's World. It's available now. And for more, you can visit her online at seanandkristasmith.com. That's his name, Sean. <laughs> and let us know how today's program ministered to you by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We love all our singles. Yes, we do. And God loves you. We always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching. And uh, thank you, ladies. It's been great. Went by mm -hmm. really Amazing. fast, didn't it? Yeah, it <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye <laughs> for today.